of an amazing Irishman. Now these days increasing numbers of people are getting out of the big cities and setting up home in the quietude of uh, rural circumstances. One such was artisan sculptor Philip Noonan, uh, who left Dublin City and set up a permanent residence, you might say, in what had been his holiday home here near Charlestown in uh, County Mayo. And his experience would encourage many more to follow in his footsteps. Dublin man Philip Noonan is a conceptual designer and artist. He has a talent for sculpting various materials into amazing works of art. Philip settled in Charlestown, County Mayo three years ago with his partner Fidelma, and in that time he has realised his lifelong dream of opening up his own studio and Charlestown's first art gallery. Well, I decided to move from Dublin down to the west of Ireland, I suppose because most people come here on a holiday, whereas when we wake up every morning we're here, we have the blue skies, we have the landscapes, we have the rolling hills, and it's just somewhere where you can grow as an artist. And Fidelma and myself left the three hours of traffic every day in Dublin. Um, Fidelma gave up 22 years working in catering to follow me down. And opening up a art gallery for us was a major step, but it meant we could do something we both loved, both enjoyed, and could live in the country. And I suppose that was really the lure of it. It was sort of being on holiday all the time. And I suppose it's like uh, winning the lottery without the money. I first became interested in art, I suppose, when I was a small child. Both my parents were artists. They met in art college in Dublin, and my father sculpted and painted and was a draftsman. My mother went on to be an art teacher, and she's in her 80s and still paints to this day. So I suppose I didn't really get that much of a choice in it. It was kind of painter, sculptor, draft, so that was really it. To describe my art, I suppose, a producer friend of mine said that my artwork looks like something that has crawled off a Tim Burton set. And some of the pieces are fairly dark, pieces like The Judge, pieces like The Phantom and James Joyce. They're more black and white, and they're very in-depth pieces. There is a continuity throughout all of my work, which is my style, but at the same time, not all of it is dark and moody and sort of Edgar Allan Poe-ish. Uh, some of the bigger pieces, like Enigma, is a very, very, very bright piece, although she's nine and a half feet by nine and a half feet. I think that detail is very important in a lot of the pieces because you may only see it for a second but whoever purchases the piece will have it for the rest of their lives and the more that you put into a piece the longer someone stares at it that they begin to see things they didn't really realize were there didn't recognize at the beginning and then a lot of the deeper meaning that's put into the work comes across the different characters the relationships between each other especially in Alice with so many characters and so much movement within the piece whereas something like the judge and the phantom although they are intricate um, are very very three-dimensional one of the pieces I do quite a lot of is called The Marriage, or Tying the Knot. Again, the two figures are re in relief, and they're mounted onto the canvas and then painted over. So it is a man and a woman balancing on a tightrope with a knot tied in the middle, tying the knot being the reference to the marriage. The woman, of course, is balanced on one foot perfectly, and the man is struggling there to balance. A lot of the inspiration for my pieces sometimes come from just images during the day, during the week, things I see, things I read ideas become in my head. In Philip's gallery, he doesn't only portray his own work, but also the work of other local artists, charging only 15% commission on pieces sold in the gallery. And he's delighted that it's the people of Charlestown and its environs that have kept his business booming. Everyone in the town has been supporting the gallery by buying paintings and sculptures for their own houses. And when we first arrived here, we thought it would be more tourist oriented gallery. But in actual fact, it's all the local people, the local communities, Curry, Tubba Curry, uh, Swinford, all of these places and all of these people come to us to buy things which are unique and are different and they can't obtain anywhere else. I don't believe very much in critics looking at your work and, and slating it because you don't have a Bachelor of Arts degree or you haven't come from college. The real critics are the people who buy your work. It's wonderful when you can actually get up in the morning, come to work, enjoy what you do, create things out of nothing, and make a living out of it, and live in the middle of the country. It's beautiful. I suppose what keeps driving me in my work is the idea that there are so many paintings that I wish to do, so many sculptures that I want to produce. 
it's kind of like a dam waiting to burst and I have an outlet through the gallery which means I can produce pieces which I love doing um, without having them um, critically acclaimed. It is the public who come and buy them on a regular basis and as long as people keep coming to the gallery and keep